The lighting has always been a really huge part of the Dead Space franchise. Lighting right up there with the sound is one of our key sort of tools of the trade when it comes to getting a really great horror atmosphere. On a lot of game teams, you won't have any dedicated lighters, just the people who build the sets sort of also throw the lights on them. Here we have as many lighters as, as we do character people um, because to us like the lighting really is almost like a character. I always try to ask the lighters to have at least the light doing something, either fritzing or fading or changing color all the time. Dead Space is much more uh, a world that needs some sort of unwrapping and exploring and, and we try to use the lighting to be another character in the world that you're sort of negotiating with and sometimes it's your friend and sometimes it's your enemy and it is always changing and moving underneath you and, and alive and something that you have to sort of contend with. Having worked on Dead Space One, and you know, we were we were pretty much our environments were the ship, the Ishimura ship, and we didn't have a lot of variety. And now we're on this huge city, so uh, you know, there's all sorts of different lighting situations, from let's say a Vegas-like shopping mall with with um, bright lights and animation going all the time, that then that light starts to fail. It's kind of different than, than what we're used to seeing in, in the traditional dead space because it's brighter and a lot of the spaces that we have are really dark. Depending on the space, there could be anything from like 10 lights to hundreds of lights. And in this space in particular, we have hundreds of lights. The challenge here is having all the lights but also keeping it creepy at the same time. So you can see it's kind of deserted, you don't know what's going on. Sort of telling a story and seeing, oh, okay, what, what's happened here, why is there papers on the floor? So we sort of highlight those areas. Where the lights used to be all kind of going and panning and everything, now they're all sort of out and it's just the long shadows from the, the light outside the window that have, that have changed everything. The main character has a spotlight the whole time, and that really can dictate how um, the player sees things and what their experience is like. And uh, it's really critical because we will light a space that without you in it, without the player in it, it really hasn't come alive yet and may feel um, sort of flat. But when you get the, the player's light in there, it really comes alive and you start to sort of only see that part. and all the other lights become like the supporting cast for the player's light to do its thing. So we went back and looked at classical um, paintings, a lot of Rembrandt and a lot of the Dutch masters around that time when they started to really get lighting in a tangible way and those paintings were really about how the light came in would illuminate a scene. And I think you can see a lot of that in sort of our strategy. A lot of times you see like stuff set on spaceships, right, sci-fi stuff. There's a lot of like beeps and boops and, and, and green light and red light and pink light and, and sort of, I don't know, it's, it, it's like this candy cane world of high techiness and again, just trying to sort of show off the, the high techness stuff. That can lead to sort of a fanciful, fantastical atmosphere and that's not what we wanted at all, right? We want white and yellow uh, lights that are sort of very realistic and conservative that uh, uh, really lead to a grounded, believable atmosphere where bad things are really happening. I think the best inspiration comes from uh, just real life. So people, you know, the lighting team will come in and, and have examples or they'll even, you know, set up little tiny lights and, and do stuff at their desk trying to sort of create interesting shadows or create little stories like that. And uh, yeah, that's, we, we're always looking for inspiration. Thank <laughs> you.